Nationwide Football League Extra in association with the Nationwide Building Society. On the way, all the weekend's news and goals as Frank Clark starts to iron out the kinks at Manchester City. We salute Stockport County, who marched all over the Saints to make their first major cup semi-final. And we profile the other striker with sheer class. But can Stoke City hang on to their rejuvenated top scorer? Well, Mike Sheeran was at Wolves this weekend, and several Premier League scouts were no doubt here to watch him, and a match vital to both sides' promotion chances. But we start with the first division leaders, Bolton Wanderers, who won at Stoke last Wednesday. This weekend, they were at home to Birmingham City. This was a revenge mission for Bolton, beaten 3-1 at St Andrews earlier in the season. A determination fired up the leaders with Nathan Blake, their leading figure. And he created the opener for Jamie Pollock. Birmingham reorganised at half-time. On came Anders Limpar and Kevin Francis. And along came an equaliser. Made by the beanpole Francis, turned in by the artful dodger Paul Devlin. Sent off in that first game back in October, and a controversial incident decided this one. With 12 minutes remaining, Martin Granger cut down John McGinley. Not just a penalty, but a sending off offence according to referee Uriah Rennie. Granger had to be dragged from the pitch, but despite the long wait, McGinley held his nerve for his 22nd of the season. Third played fifth at Carrow Road, and Norwich ended the happier after suffering for much of the game. They went behind to a flute goal by Nicky Eden. And then had striker Robert Fleck sent off. But the ten men played to the finish rather better than Barnsley's eleven, who were caught sleeping by Mike Milligan's quick free kick and punished by Darren Eady. Just two minutes from time. Without a home win in two months and so short of former numbers, Swindon player manager Steve McMahon picked himself. Maybe he should do it every week. McMahon prompted everything, and a rare goal from defender Gary Elkins was quickly followed by a bizarre goal from Sheffield United defender David Holdsworth. Holdsworth did feel marginally better by the finish after pulling one back from a corner, but Swindon deserved their win. Form counted for nothing in this London derby, Novice keeper Carlo Nash and midfielder David Hopkin were Crystal Palace's heroes. Hopkins' winner lifts them above Queen's Park Rangers and into the top six. A win over Norwich in midweek had taken Tranmere back into the top six, but they can't consolidate that position. Despite taking an early lead when Graham Branch converted Tony Thomas's cross, John Aldridge saw his side make too many mistakes at the back. Reading might have one of the poorest away records in the division, but in Trevor Morley, they have a striker who will punish errors and who will cash in on good fortune. Two minutes into the second half, Morley got behind John McGreal and then ran beyond goalkeeper Eric Nixon into an offside position with only one defender between him and the goal. But there was no flag and Morley made it 2-1. Reading's defence couldn't hold out, however. 18 minutes from the end, Paul Cook's header was blocked, but Ian Moore popped up Aldo style. An eventful few days for Bradford City began badly. That nudge from striker Gordon Watson was followed by a crude tackle on Watson from Huddersfield's Kevin Gray. A double fracture of Watson's right leg will keep Bradford's half a million pound signing out for six months and Bradford manager Chris Kamara is so incensed he's now considering legal action against Huddersfield and Gray who was booked. The match commentator is John Helm. Just in first time, Bullock was coming for it and a chance on the edge of the area still for Bullock to knock one across. And he's done pretty well to keep that in play. Schwartz has punts out, Crosby's goal! What a start for Huddersfield! And they've got two strikers out there having John Steiner but can they get a goal yes they can and it's a rarity it's a header for a model he really is loving it at Bradford City 
Loving it so much, he's turned down the player manager's job at West Bromwich Albion. Another blow to West Brom chairman Tony Hale, who's already failed to tempt Bruce Rioch. And West Brom remain in the bottom eight. Paul Pesky Salido scored with their first direct shot at Port Vale. And from then on, the game's two flyweight strikers traded blows. Tony Naylor, just five feet six, was too sharp for West Brom's defenders and curled an equaliser beyond Paul Crichton. Back came West Brom and their little Canadian. Ian Hamilton's chip caused the initial problems and it was Pesky Salido who came up with the ball. But for sheer persistence, Port Vale and Naylor earned their second equaliser and their point as West Brom's defence dallied. Tiny Tony made it 15 for the season. At the Manor Ground, Georgie Kincladzi had one of his very good days. Here's Peter Brackley. Simons and Horlock making their challenge from further back. Yes, sir. What's up? Here's Rosler, that's a great touch. Kincladzi. Super play. Oh, and a fabulous goal from Georgie Kincladzi. so easy yeah brilliant I mean brilliant uh, mustn't overlook the part the centre forward played in that Rosler you know great little layoff to him to set the thing in motion what's that lovely layoff now there I thought he was going to have a first time blasted it turn two defenders sell themselves and then all the composure in the world Angel on by Lovas to kick Kladzi place by Smith off goes Kit Clancy. Can he finish here? He certainly can. Georgia Kit Clancy is an absolute genius. Jepson. Then Gabbiadini. That's Murphy with the shot. Now Moody! A glimmer of hope for Oxford. Here's Kit Clancy. Lobas hadn't really picked him up. Then Heaney, and a chance for Rosler. Four one. We're getting better. I mean, with some good finishing today, excellent finishing. You know, we've not looked like scoring many goals. Um, but we've got four today, and, and some marvellous finishing. And Ken Gladsy played particularly well. Well, when, when Georgie's playing like that, he's a, he's a threat, you know. He's a world-class player. And uh, we've been doing a lot of work uh, at trying to get him into the right kind of areas. And he's done very well for us today. Southend United couldn't follow up a surprise win over Crystal Palace with victory over Ipswich. Phil Gridlett went closest, but Richard Wright was outstanding, as was Southend's keeper, Simon Royce. Three defeats running have dropped Oldham back into the relegation places, but Paul Hall's early goal gives Portsmouth another reason to believe they can reach the playoffs. Grimsby Town have only won six league games all season. Two of them have been against Charlton who are drifting ominously close to the bottom three and who are convinced referee Brian Coddington decided this game. He saw a foul inside the area and immediately after Clive Mendonca had stroked in the penalty, Charlton defender Richard Rufus was sent off for dissent. Mark Kinsella followed him for a second bookable offence. Grimsby kept their cool and quickly sealed three vital points with a neatly made goal finished by Jack Lester. Look back at the record books from recent seasons and you'd think the rights to scoring goals in Division 1 belong to an old boy network, to an Elise over 30s club. But Mike Sheeran, just 25, is standing up for the young and upwardly mobile and giving Premier League managers a good reason not to take their passports every time they go scouting. And he's proof of that old striker's adage, once you've got it, you never lose it, but it can go missing. At 19, Sheeran was scoring goals in the top division for Manchester City. Sophisticated goals that took him into the England under-21 team, alongside Anderton, Redknapp and McManaman. As soon as I played in the Man City first team, uh, I think I scored four goals in the first seven games. So obviously, you know, that was in the top flight, so people take notice then. But I just didn't think I'd be leaving Man City. Well, I think, you know, I started having a few problems and then the fitness started to 
I just say to, to weaken. And um, I found it hard to come back. I found it hard as soon as I, I was out of the team. I found it hard, you know, to um, how to cope with that. At 21, Manchester City's shooting star was surplus and sold to Norwich for a million pounds. He scored on his debut, but instead of finding himself again, Sheeran had turned into a dead end. What he now calls too much good living didn't help. For some reason, uh, I got lost somewhere and moved on to Norwich. And I think you, it's fair to say you can get lost when you go to Norwich. It's for a Manchester lad. Uh, it's a strange part of the country for a Manchester boy to end up. And I just had a little feeling that maybe there was a little bit more in the tank. Fifteen months ago, Stoke paid Norwich £150,000. But that was still a gamble for a club that has to be careful with its money on a player as fragile as Sheeran. In three years, he'd barely played ten games in a row. I've looked back at my career and I know what, know what things I probably won't do again and what things I'm going to keep on doing. And I, I say, since I've come to Stoke, I've, I've been enjoying myself my football brilliantly. I just told them, you've got to get yourself fit. Don't kid yourself on that uh, the game is easy to play nowadays and it's, it's all about just having that ability. Um, you know, if you just needed the ability, then we'd drag George Best back out of retirement. You need legs and you need that uh, legs to get about the park. And I told him that and I think he, it registered and uh, we've had a much better Mike Sheeran than, than Norwich had. Who else is going to score any goal there? Best player in Division 1, Premiership class. But that's the dilemma. Sheeran averages a goal every game and a half at Stoke. 21 this season have taken a modest team into playoff contention again. But if Sheeran has rediscovered his talent, how long can Stoke keep him? Last month, Queen's Park Rangers offered 2.3 million. And talk of a move to West Ham increases by the day. Stoke deny it, but whatever they do, it seems they can't win. The rumours have coincided with Sheeran's first dip in form and at Wolves, Stoke's chances of avoiding a third defeat running were quickly dented by one of the old masters. If Stoke were to cancel out Steve Bull's 16th of the season, Sheeran was their only real chance. But too often he was forced to try and create something. Early in the second half, the manager's son, Mike Macari, connected with Sheeran's cross and almost scored his first league goal. But within minutes, Stokes' defence were punctured again by Neil Emblen's run and cross and Bull's ageless instinct. His mission is to take Wolves into the Premier League. Bull's never played in the top division. Sheeran has, and in the weeks to come, he might have to decide if staying with Stoke is his best way of getting back there. I like to keep him saying to himself is that you can only prove it, you know, each week I go out and play a game. And uh, you can only score the goals against the team you're playing against. You can't go scoring goals against Newcastle if you're not on the pitch against Newcastle. Maybe he doesn't regard the clubs that have come in as, as big clubs. Uh, if big clubs in the Premiership come in, then he'll, he'll be knocking on my door, that's for certain. And he'll be more or less asking to go because it's, uh, that's the way of football at the moment, I'm afraid. Stoke City have dropped to ninth, but they're one of four teams on 43 points. Crystal Palace head that group in sixth. Bolton are now 12 points clear of Wolves up to second. Grimsby stay bottom, but they've closed to within a point of Oldham, now below South End. Manchester City's 4-1 win at Oxford United lifts them above Bradford City.